I want to believe that uh, you will be encouraged and you will find strength in facing the day ahead of you. There are many things that are happening in our time. There are many things that are hitting around us, left, right, and center. But uh, I've come to you this morning to tell you, don't lose heart. Whatever it is that you may be facing at such a time, don't lose heart. I want to encourage somebody. There is uh, some work you've been doing, and you feel like it is not moving. I want to tell you, don't lose heart. There are some people that you've been involved in doing different things here and there, and it looks like it is taking too long before you see the results of it. My word for you this morning is, don't lose heart. I want us to read a scripture from the book of 2 Corinthians. We are reading from verse number, chapter number 4, from verse number 1. The first verse, I like what it says. The Bible says, Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. There are things that God has given unto us. There are things God has done in our lives. Because of his grace and his mercy, we don't have them because of how good we are, not because we deserve them, but because of his mercy. And I just want you to know, you should not lose heart. There are things that God has desired to do with you. That is why he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. And to you this morning, don't lose heart. Don't feel neglected. Don't feel left out. Know that there is something exactly that God is doing because he has put you where you are for such a time as this. My friend, are you asking questions why you are where you are? Are, are you wondering whether there is something good that is going to come from what you're doing? Don't lose heart. God is in the process of doing everything for you so that you can see his grace abide together with you. That is why the, the writer would say for us that uh, since we have this ministry, since you have it, since you have what God has put in you, the light of Christ has shone within your heart. Don't lose heart. Don't feel left aside. Know that God is with you and he's going to do everything for you so that you can see his grace abide within your life. Sometimes we may face some difficult times. Occasionally, we may go through some hard times, but it is not time to give up. Even if those hard times are coming your way, it is no time to give up. It's no time to lose heart. You've come this far. Keep going. Keep running this race. There are things that must be renounced out of our lives. That is what verse number two would say. It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, recommending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. There are things that we just have to do away with, things that don't bring glory to God, things that do not glorify or things that are not, are not godly. Those are the things that we've got to do away with. So this morning, I want you to know that if there's anything that you need to renounce in order to glorify God in your life, I want you to say to you, renounce them. Put them aside. Things that cause shame in your life, things that are crafty, things that make you feel like you are not pleasing God at all, leave them aside. Put them away. Renounce them. And let God be glorified in your life because we must desire the manifestation of the truth of God within us. He's given us this ministry so that we can live and serve him for truth. My friend, this morning, put aside anything that will make you not live according to how God would want you to live. As much as there may be difficulties, as much as there may be hard times, you may suffer, you may, be, you may get to a place where people look at you and think you don't deserve what you have but never lose heart because God will always be on your side. Like when I read verse number seven of the same scripture, the Bible says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that we, uh, that the excellence of the power of God may, the power may be of God and not of us. Friends, we are just vessels that God has put his treasure within us. The reason you can do what you do is because God has put his treasure in you. And because of what God has put in us, I'm coming to you this morning to encourage you. 
don't lose heart. There is nothing good in us apart from what God is putting in. You can look at yourself and put yourself aside and feel like you do not deserve anything. But you know what? There is something that God would want to put in you so that it can bring glory to his name. That is why in this earthen vessels, the Lord has put his treasure. What is in you, what is in us is greater. You carry a treasure. Do not look down upon yourself. Encourage yourself with the treasure that God has put within you. Without him, you are nothing. That is why the Bible speaks and says when we were nobodies, he made us somebody. When we were rejected, he accepted us. So you are who you are because of the mercies of God. Verse number eight would say, we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed. You are pressed by issues of life, especially right now. Some of us are pressed with this economy. Some of us are pressed with sicknesses and diseases. Some of us are pressed in different ways, but God says we are not crushed. We may be pressed, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You can imagine what God is telling you this morning. If you are feeling some of these things happening around and about your life, and you thought you can't afford a smile, you thought there was nothing worthy living for, I want you to know all those things will happen to you. But as they happen, know the faithfulness of God in your life. As they happen, know that God is being glorified in you. Even when things are tough, even when you are looking around and wondering, is this worthy a believer? I want you to know, you may be hard pressed, but you shall not be crushed. Take it from me that there are hard times that will come along your way. There are tough things that will happen, but they cannot crush you down. You cannot be finished. Believe in God. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. You've run this race up to where you are. Don't you ever give up. Present yourself to God and know that God is going to fight every battle for you. If, uh, if anything is put, pulling you down, just know that God will lift you up because he's faithful in his word. But you know what? You may be persecuted, but you're not in despair because God is holding your hand. Are you looking at yourself and feeling, oh, this is just too much for me? I want you to know God will hold your hand. Remember what that scripture says. You will be persecuted, but not forsaken. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Take him at his word. Take him at what he says, that he is there for you, standing on your side, so that he can be an encouragement unto your life. He says you shall be struck down, but not destroyed. You may feel like, you know, the fire is so, the heat is so much. You may feel like, oh my goodness, will I go through this fire? There are men and women that has, have gone through the same fire and they have made it. As a family, you may be feeling and facing some difficult moments, wondering how you will feed that family, wondering what you will do with your children, wondering what you will do for the entire life, but I want you to know you will not be destroyed. What is happening to you has not come to destroy you. God is in the process of shaping you to become somebody that will bring glory and honor to his name. Why am I saying so? Christ must be manifested in our lives and through us. If, if some of these things don't happen, I'm telling you, it may look like we are going the same direction with the enemy. So sometimes we face what we are facing because we have an enemy fighting us. We have a, a place where we are headed to and where we are going is better than where we are. So keep going, keep running. Yes, discouragements will be there, but keep running. Yes, people People will say whatever they want to say. My friend, keep running. Keep holding on. Keep seeing what God is about to do. Because he's faithful. Him who has called you into this. And our faith must be tested. Friends, the reason you are facing what you are facing. Sometimes our faith must be tested. You know what? If our faith is not tested, then we may not understand the treasure that is within us. So as you are being tested, as you are being, you go through what you're going through and you're feeling it is tough, it is difficult, know that it is a test. And every test will always come to pass. Friends, you can't do tests throughout your life. Even if you are a student, get it right. 
you will study, and then you will do a test. So you are not being tested of what you don't know. You are being tested of the things that God has allowed you to go through. So that test you are passing. You're not going to fail. You're not a failure at all. You are going to make it because God already has made it known for you that your faith will be tested, but you will still make it. Remember, it is the Spirit of God working within you. It is the Spirit of God lifting you up. It is the Spirit of God giving you the strength to go through that test. And it is not for long. It is temporal. It will be there for a little while and it will end. So keep holding on God, knowing that that test is coming to an end very, very soon. And his grace will keep you. It is sufficient. Friends, if it were not by the grace of God, many of us would not be where we are today. You can look back and see how far God has brought you. When the, this, maybe what you're going on in, but when what you're going through began, it began some years back. It might have begun some months ago. It might have begun some weeks ago. And you never thought you would get to where you have gotten to. Listen to me. It's not going to be there forever. It is temporal and you are making it. You are moving according to God's purposes and you will go to where God wants you to go. He will take you further than where you are today. Dear friend, raise your faith in Christ and hold on the grace of God because his grace will carry you through everything that you are going through and you will see his faithfulness in your life. I like what the Bible says in verse number 11. For we who have a who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Christ also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. So whatever happens in us is because of Christ. And because it is because of him, is he going to leave you there? Is he going to let you go through it alone? No. The testings of our faith will not bring us down. Jehovah will always stand to show himself great and mighty on our behalf. So since we have this, this spirit within us, let's continue holding on. Let, let's not lose heart. My word to you today will be don't lose heart. Hold on. You are greater. There is greater things within you. There is a treasure that is so great within you. Don't let the enemy cheat you. Don't allow the enemy to sway you around to so that you may lose what you have. Hold fast unto your faith and don't let your faith fail you. Then if you go to verse number 16. I also love what the Bible says. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Eh? The writer continues to encourage us not to lose heart. Therefore, do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. <laughs> the things that we are facing in our lives are not destroying us. They're not making us become weaker. They're not making you feel like you are done. No, the Bible says what we are facing from outward is strengthening the inner man within our lives. So no need to lose heart in whatsoever we are going through. Though the, the, those hard moments. But remember the Bible says that the, the inner man is being renewed. The inner man is being strengthened. So you may look, uh, look weak from the outward, but from the inside you are stronger because greater is he that is in within you. God is still our strength. We do not depend on ourselves. Our strength is in the Lord. No wonder the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Choose to rejoice. Choose to be able to look at what God is doing and know that he's up to something greater in your life. Allow joy to fill your heart. Allow love to flow through your life. Allow yourself to give hope to others. There are those that are down. They are so downcast they are broken hearted it is your responsibility to go to them why because the inner man within you is stronger strengthen those who are broken those who are heart broken give them hope let them know that this will also pass. Let them know that there is something that God is working within our lives. So dear friends, he, God is renewing our inward man. Why? Because he knows when our inward man is stronger, the outward man will stand. If we may look a strong out and we are weak in, then we will not make it. But when we are strong in the inside, then the outward will be stronger because the inward is strong. So dear friends, day by day the Lord is renewing you. You are not growing weaker. You may look around and say every day things are changing. Every day news, bad news. Every day things are not working the way we would expect. But the word of God says that 
that the inner man is being renewed day by day through what we go through. So whatever you are facing is renewing your inner man. If it, if that is why you should never, never lose hope. Stand strong. Hold on. Be strong, be strengthened, and you will be able to know that God is your strength. When you know he is your strength, you will continue to hold on him. You will continue to see his greatness fall upon your life each and every day. So I love what that scripture talks about, that therefore we do not lose hope. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your sleep. Don't throw up your hands in the air. Don't say, I'm giving up. This has taken too long. My friend, don't throw out your faith. Don't lose heart. Don't throw your hands and say, it is over. It is not over because God is working on your life. That's number 17. The Bible, the Bible would say, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Remember, it is just light. It is not that, that greater. Sometimes it may look great, but the Bible calls it the light affliction. You may be afflicted. And I'm telling you, you will be afflicted. Even that is why the Bible says in the book of Psalms that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But you know what? God delivers them out of them all. You will be afflicted, but God will deliver you. You will be you will be pushed around, but you will never be crushed. You will be persecuted, but you will never be destroyed. All those are afflictions that are called light afflictions. They are working for our good. They are making us stronger than we, may, we will have been. It is only for a season that we may go through what we are going through. It's not for eternity. It is temporal. You know, that is what the Bible says. The Bible says that the lighter afflictions are temporal. In other words, they are not permanent. You are not in that state forever. You're not going through what you're going through permanently. Very soon it shall go out. It shall be over. You shall stand out and see what God has done for your life. It is a seasonal one. It's like a seasonal river. Seasonal rivers are only there when it rains. But when it doesn't rain, there no, there, there is, the river is not there. So even your affliction, the ones that you are facing right now, they are only seasonal. Very soon it shall be over. So don't look at it and feel finished. Don't look Look at it, feel, oh, I'm done. I'm, in this case, I'm dying. You are not dying. You will be stronger very, very soon. What am I trying to tell you? Go through it with the courage. Face what you are facing with the courage, strength, knowing that you will go through. And you will, it, God will bring the best out of you. You know what, friends? You can't go through something and come out the same. God does not allow you to face whatever you are facing, the affliction that you are going through. And then when you come out, you are just the same. You will be better than those who have not been there. When they meet you tomorrow, they will be asking you, uh, what happened? It will be because you overcame. Because you overcame, you have become stronger in many ways. So God is bringing the best out of your life. Friends, Let's allow ourselves to go through what we are going through. Let's allow ourselves to face what we are facing. You know what? It will never leave us the same. You will come out better than you went in. You will come out brighter than you went in. You will not have been wiser than if you never went through it. You will be more wiser. You will be more brighter. And great things will continually work within your life. So friends, allow the best to come out of you. Because God is doing it in his own way. What is seen is temporal. It's not permanent. That is what verse number 18 would be able to tell you. Wiley, we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which which are not seen. For the things which are seen are, temporal, uh, are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What you are going through can be seen. Things you are facing, they are temporal. So friends, let me say, what you see is temporal. It shall soon get off. It shall soon disappear. If it can be seen, it can be still disappear. So I want you to know it is temporal because it can be seen. That which is seen is temporal or it is for a moment. It, it, it will soon vanish. I want you to know that affliction will, still, will, will soon vanish. That trouble will soon vanish. That hardship will, stu, will, will soon vanish. Look at God and know he's working something greater within you. Because what is seen will vanish. But what is not seen is eternal. 
Friends, there is something that you are not seeing when you are facing what you are saying. God is working at the background. God is working behind the curtains. That is why you are not seeing it. But when you will see it, it will be eternal. It is what God is fulfilling in your life. You do not have to lose hope. Why? Because of what is set ahead of you. Because of what you cannot see. You know what? Even the people that went ahead of us, the reason they got hold of what they were holding on is because they knew what was set ahead of them. They were not seeing it. There was a greater reward that they did not see, but they kept holding on. I want to encourage you, keep holding on. Don't lose the heart. There is no reason. There is no reason why you should give up. There is no reason why you should lose heart. There is no reason why you should say you are the only one facing what you're facing. God is in the process of making you a better person. God is in the process of lifting you and making you a blessing to the nations. You'll be a blessing in your family. You'll be a blessing in the place of work you work in. You'll be a blessing in that business ground. People around you will be blessed for you being there because God has molded you into a greater person. So don't lose heart. Don't throw in the towel. Continue holding on and know that God is on your side for something greater is coming out of you. Don't throw in at the towel. Don't throw your hands up. Don't say it's over. It is not over until he says it is over. Blessed be the name of the Lord for those who want to hold on up to the end. Something greater is coming out. Soon it will be seen what was not seen. It will be seen and everyone will give glory to God. What might have gone wrong will be made right because of what God is doing in your life. Friends, remember, we have received mercy. And because we have received mercy, it is not of us. It is what God is doing. So don't lose heart. Whatever it is, don't lose heart. Remember, God is working in you. And what is working in you soon will be seen. And you will be a blessing to the rest of the people. Friends, I cannot continue on more and more. I just want to stop here. But as I stop, I want you to know, hold on eternal peace of God. Because if God is doing it, it can only be God who will accomplish it. And friends, you may be facing what you're facing because of some of the things that are, you have involved yourselves in. Remember when I read the second verse in that chapter, I said whatever things are shameful, whatever things are crafty, whatever things are not right, do not suffer for wrongdoing. If you suffer for right doing, you will be blessed. But if you are suffering for wrongdoing, I want to let you know you can turn around. You can change your life. Something good can happen within you. There is something that God can begin to turn around within you. Why? Because he needs you to glorify him. Do things that will glorify God. So quit things that you may be suffering from because they are wrong. Begin to do what is right. If you suffer for the good, you are blessed. If you suffer for the wrong, you are wasting away. Remember God is in the process of perfecting you. So if you do not know this God, I will encourage you to get to know him. If you've never given your life to him, I will encourage you to give your life to him. He's the only one who can get you out of suffering from the wrong to make you begin to enjoy the blessings of knowing him. And that is what may make you not lose heart. Maybe you wanted to lose heart because you didn't have who to run to. Run to Jesus and you will never ever be the same again. I would love to pray for you. And as I get to pray for you, I want you to know that God is concerned about you. He's concerned about your situation. He's concerned about the things that you're going through. So I'm going to pray. And as I pray, I want you to be strong even in that suffering. Be strong even in that affliction. It is a lighter one and soon it shall be over. So friends, would you allow me to pray for you? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for every man and every woman that has listened to me this morning. Lord, as they go through this day, I want to pray. Whatever has been difficult in their lives, whatever has afflicted them, oh God, I want to pray, Father, may you come through for them. Father, your word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you are God who delivers them out of them all. I want to pray this morning, deliver your children. 
Deliver them from that affliction. Deliver them from being oppressed. Deliver them from being persecuted. Deliver them that they may not be crushed by anything that is happening around them, oh God. I want to pray, my Father, may they find peace in loving you. May they find peace in serving you and loving to do what you've called them to do. You've given them this ministry, Lord, and I pray, let them not lose heart. It is my prayer that if there, if there was anyone listening to me that was feeling like he's going to give up, that was feeling like throwing in a towel, that was thinking like uh, throwing up their hands, I want to pray, dear Father, encourage them this morning that you are together with them and my Father, the inward man has been strengthened so that they can go through this life for the glory and honor of your name. And Father, for those who do not know you, I want to pray, give them the courage to surrender their lives to you. Give them the courage to say, Jesus, be Lord and Savior of their lives. Why? In this earthen vessel, you've put your treasure. And God, we want to carry this treasure with, with everyone around us so that we can glorify your name. So bless us and minister to us. I give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. I just want you to know you are blessed of God. Do not throw in the towel. Do not throw up your hands. Whatever you've gone through, God has come through for you. So be strong, be courageous, and see the grace of God carry you through this life. May God bless you as you go through this day. Be successful in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Enjoy your day. It is yours truly, Reverend Becky Baraka from Deliverance Church Umoja. Amen. Amen.